Hello, good afternoon. We are the RSI Bay Area 2008 iGEM team. This year we created synthetic circuits for the differentiation targeting of cardiomyocytes to damage infarcted cardiac tissue. Our team this year consists of five undergraduates from UC Berkeley and Stanford University under the advisory of Andrew Mendelson. Our vision at RSI has always been to develop new technologies to target, to program cells to target, recognize, and repair damaged disease tissue. Every year, 1.2 million people suffer a new recurrent MI, and as a result of this, 40% of these patients die. Thus, every 65 seconds, an American dies of a coronary event. There is an urgent need to repair myocardial infarcted hearts, um, and it is a known fact that humans and other mammalian hearts do not regenerate after an MI. Um, current therapies are based on directing cells to do the right thing. Uh, state-of-the-art cells, state-of-the-art tech therapies using stem cells um, or embryonic or adult derived um, are basically hoping that upon injection these cells can target and spontaneously differentiate into cardiomyocytes and repair the damaged heart. However, um, reports of these um, have modest effects, 5 to 8 percent improved left ventricular function. The problems with current stem cell therapies. Um, adult stem cells cannot recognize damaged heart tissue. Upon localization to damaged cardiomyocytes, these cells cannot efficiently differentiate into cardiomyocytes. Also, the differentiated cardiomyocytes die even before they reach the damaged myocardium, which actually is one of the largest um, problems to current therapies. Also, um, there is, there, is no, there is no address of alteration of the tissue myelu. Therefore, um, angiogenesis and the procurement of oxygen and nutrients to the new tissue um, is, n is not available. Um, also, um, there, the therapies are limited to superficial um, lesions and do not address the deeper tissue wounds. Um, and as again, the current stem cell therapies um, only provide a very modest benefit. In 2007, the RSI iGEM um, team designed three novel chimeric signaling systems to target damaged cardiac tissue. Um, from these, the one of them, the CRP system, um, had very promising data. And so in the interim from 2007, we have continued working on that circuit. In, in that time, we have shown that one, the CRP circuit, um, efficiently targets um, damaged myocardium. Also, that upon binding damaged myocardium, that it relays the effector and signaling proceeds as it should. Also, for 2008, um, we have implemented a complementary circuit for the efficient induced um, differentiation of cardiomyocytes. For a brief overview of the CRP targeting system from last year, the basic premise is that there will be a cardiac specific marker um, that will render itself upon an MI and that um, in our pre-programmed cells um, we will have the circuit, um, all, we will have a receptor that has um, high specificity for this um, molecule, in this case CRP, um, and also we will have integrated um, novel fusion proteins um, that piggyback off the endogenous signaling pathway. Um, in this case, we have fused uh, one of the signaling proteins, SYK, to a transcriptional activator, VP16AD, off the HSV1 virus. Also, we have P85, another one of the endogenous proteins, um, fused to a LexA E. coli DNA binding protein. In the pathway, um, during an MI, CRP will be deposited on damaged myocardium um, at very high concentrations. Upon binding of the FC gamma to the pentameric CRP, FC gamma dimerization occurs. This elicits the recruitment of SYKVP16 um, binding on phosphorylated sites. Um, when this binds, P85 alpha lexase is recruited and binds 
to the SYK. When both these proteins are in close proximity to each other, they are tethered together by um, an intine mediated post translational splicing and will um, result in the reconstitution of a novel transcription factor, which is VP16 Lex A. This novel transcription factor will then go on to activate downstream effectors um, that will aid in anti-apoptosis integration and the expression of reporter genes. Um, as I described earlier, one of the major problems with current stem cell therapies um, is the activation of apoptosis pathway. Therefore, to address this issue, we have um, created a cocktail of anti-apoptotic factors. We have addressed both the bad backs and caspase family of apoptosis, as well as the anti-necrotic um, inhibitor and a calpane inhibitor. To address the issue of targeting our cells to um, deeper wounds, um, we've also created a effector gene that has um, a cell-cell adhesion molecule, N-cadherin. It is known that um, the differential expression of this um, cell adhesion molecule renders cells that have a high expression of this to um, the inners of a cell mass. Thus, this will allow for the targeting of our cells um, to deeper lesions. Also, um, to alter the tissue milieu, we have also created effector genes, um, one with uh, VEGF, a uh, pro-angiogenic factor that will um, promote the growth of new blood vessel formation, and also a um, anti-scarring agent, um, HGF, hepatocyte growth factor. HGF um, will prevent the fibrotic scar formation, which actually is inhibitory to repairing damaged hearts. Um, and it also is a cardiomyotrophic factor, which directly um, aids in cardiomyocyte viability. Um, some of our data. So uh, the data we present is um, based off of a in vitro H9C2 rat cardiomyocyte um, infarct model that we utilized. Um, basically, you grow a layer of H9C2 cells, you treat them with an ischemic media, um, and then you add CRP, and the CRP will attach to these, um, these damaged cardiomyocytes, as would in a real MI. Um, and then you withdraw the CRP in a separate dish well, you have your um, cells, transfected, infected, whatever, with your constructs of interest that you wish to characterize. In this case, we wanted to show that FC gamma does in fact have specificity for um, CRP on damaged cardiomyocytes with immobilized CRP. So in, in the top you see that um, these are cells that have been transfected with FC gamma in an expression plasmid. Um, and the bottom is um, cells that have FC gamma um, positive. So the red um, indicates um, our reporter gene, DS red 2. In addition to FC gamma plasmid, um, the cells were transfected with a marker plasmid at a 1 to 10 molar ratio. So the red fluorescence indicates cells that should be expressing FC gamma. You can see that in FC gamma positive that the red cells are actually bound, whereas in FC gamma negative cells, there are no bound cells. Thus it shows that our FC gamma has high specificity for the damaged cells bearing the CRP. Um, however, for real world applications, we really need to address the issue that there are high concentrations of CRP um, in, in the tissue milieu um, after an MI. So is our FC gamma um, a specificity for CRP sufficient enough such that it will bind in the presence of um, high competitive CRP. Um, you can see that in our competitive test, which was conducted similarly to the one previously, except that there, would, there was a CRP high concentration left in when we added the cells, this, uh, the FC gamma positive cells, that there are cells that bind in the competitive um, that are FC gamma positive, but in FC gamma negative cells in competition there are no bound cells. Um, however, in order to really test that our FC gamma can bind um, <coughs> damaged cardiomyocytes, um, we wanted to target um, cardiomyocytes 
bearing FC gamma um, t with our ischemic model. In the previous slide, in the two previous slides I showed, um, they were used 293T um, human lung carcinoma cell lines. Um, in this one, we created lentiviral plasmids and infected H9C2s so that we could test um, cardiomyocytes, targeting cardiomyocytes. You can see that in panel C and D, which are FC gamma positive cells, that there are actually red fluorescent cells binding the ischemic cardiomyocytes. Um, in order to test that our signal works um, and, it's, and it relays effector genes, um, we transfected our entire CRP construct into 293T cells. Um, and then tested whether or not um, the activation of a downstream reporter, GFP, under the control of a Lexa operator would be activated um, when CRP was present. So you can see that when CRP is present, um, the, tra the, tra the transfected cells with the CRP circuitry do in fact relay the signal. Um, and even though there are transfected cells in this population, um, in the absence of CRP, there is no activation of the signal, thus showing proof of principle that our signaling circuit does work. Also, in order to characterize further um, the binding specificity of FC gamma, we've also created clonal lines of H9C2 FC gamma um, cells, which um, we will continue our work on. Some advantages of our circuit, um, one is that it selectively binds CRP via the FC gamma. Um, also that it neutralizes CRP, which is a pro-inflammatory agent, so by sequestering it away, we reduce the inflammation. Also that our system is highly adaptable um, to targeting other systems that um, have CRP, such as uh, atherosclerosis. Um, also because we are using um, the endogenous pathway um, that we know that these proteins interact and signal like they should, uh, and there should be limited potential for crosstalk. However, there are concerns with our, um, with our system, one being that our FC gamma receptor also binds to IgG. Um, to address this issue, we used a specific version of FC gamma, FC gamma R2A, which has a mutation at arginine 131. This version has increased um, affinity for CRP and a reduced affinity for IgG. Um, and the other concern um, is that there are CRP levels present already in the serum, and will our cells be able to bind even in the presence of CRP? Well, as I showed earlier um, from our competitive experiments, that this should not be an issue. Our future directions for our circuit. Um, we would like to uh, tune the sensitivity of our targeting circuit, um, either by studying our clonal lines of H9C2 um, or by making mutants of making mutants of Lexa or the Lexa operator. Um, and as always at RSI, we are looking to address the next generation um, of circuits. Uh, we would like to create a more universal targeting signaling circuit. Um, actually one that we presented last year. The SCFV erythropoietin receptor that targets uh, myosin heavy chain, um, one of the three that was part of our um, signaling circuit, would be more like what I'd be proposing, where you can target different disease tissues, um, anything that an antibody can be generated against. Thank you. All right. So in addition to the targeting circuit, we worked on a cardiomyocyte differentiation circuit based on our current understanding of uh, mouse carcinoma cell lines, P19, and derivatives, as well as human stem cells. Um, <coughs> current problems include an uh, inefficient process, uh, long differentiation time, the need to add factors uh, in, during the process, and the fact that you can't select for um, a pure line of cardiomyocytes in the end. We will try to address all these concerns with our circuit. Our circuit will take advantage of an inducible doxycycline uh, circuit expressing key um, endogenous proteins, NKX 2.5 and GATA4. Um, they are transcriptional activators that will initiate cardiomyogenesis as well as enter a positive uh, self-feedback loop. So once we induce the circuit, it will 
act autonomous, autonomously and continue working. Um, after that, BMP4 will further the latter stages of differentiation. Initially, it is inhibitory, so we have to focus on a delayed expression of it. We have used two um, alternative constructs to uh, do this, two different promoters. I'll get into that later. Um, finally, we want to select for a pure cardiomyocyte uh, population, and so we use an antibiotic uh, resistance gene, neomyosin resistance, um, and if expressed at the late stages of differentiation, once we have pure cardiomyocytes, um, it will it select for the pure line. So we will use an inducible doxycycline system, um, which, whose main elements consist of a TET responsive element, um, which is seven TET operator uh, regions fused to a CMV minimal promoter um, here. And the other component is the RTTA transactivator protein, uh, which will be constitutively expressed via CMV promoter. Um, RTTA will only bind uh, the TET responsive element in the presence of doxycycline, and we will induce the um, circuit in that way. Agatafor and NKX 2.5, like I said earlier, will initiate cardiomyogenesis, and uh, because of the self-feedback positive loop, will act autonomously once started. Uh, we add a visualization marker, DS-RED, um, fused with a 2A uh, FMDV foot and mouth disease, 2A sequence allowing polycystronic messages in mammalian DNA. Um, to delay the expression of BMP4, we use two alternative methods. Um, one, they uh, use the alpha cardiac actin uh, middle contractile protein, uh, which is directly controlled by NKX 2.5, fused to three A20 repeats, which is a NKX uh, 2.5 consensus binding domain. Uh, that, once the initial stages are begun um, with NKX 2.5 and the buildup, will induce a delayed expression of BMP4. An alternative method uh, uses the TCF receptor, um, here you can see in this slide why this might be a good choice. Again, BMP4 is inhibitory in the early stages, um, while it promotes differentiation in the latter stages. Uh, you can also see that WENT signaling is involved in the initial stages of differentiation. We will use this WENT signaling to uh, have a buildup of beta catenin, which with, our, which with TCF will then bind our TCF promoter and initiate uh, our delayed expression of BMP4. So that's the alternative method. Um, when we want to select for the differentiated cardiomyocytes, we uh, will use a promoter from a late contractile protein, alpha cardiac myosin heavy chain, um, so that only pure cardiomy only differentiated cardiomyocytes can then induce expression of the neomyosin resistance gene. This uh, will phosphorylate and inactivate um, antibiotics such as G418, uh, which we well, can add to select for a pure population. Again, we use a visualization marker um, with the 2A sequence. There are many advantages to, um, to our, uh, con uh, our circuit. One is that we can induce it with doxycycline. The circuit is tightly controlled and it's autonomous once induced. Um, it uses key endogenous proteins, uh, NKX 2.5 and GATA4. And, um, when we finally get to the neomycin resistance, we can get the pure population. And this is important because uh, one concern for the pathway might be that injecting stem cells into the human will um, lead to cancer. However, because we select for only post-mitotic differentiated cardiomyocytes, we can ensure that there are, this won't happen and won't re-enter the cell cycle. Secondly, we don't need to use stem cell precursors. We could use cardiac fibroblasts or um, non-cardiac cells, such as adipocytes or leukocytes via transdifferentiation. Um, future direction, directions include um, integrating our circuits into a lentiviral vector. We can characterize the circuit, test whether, say, the BMP4, um, which BMP4 uh, construct will be better for our purposes. And then we can use a herpes simplex virus amplicon in actual therapy so that we can combine all the, cir all the constructs together as well as uh, not uh, have the problems that lentiviral vectors will have with maybe inducing cancer. Um, we uh, will integrate our circuiting. Okay, I'll finish up right then. Okay, we will integrate the 
uh, the targeting and the differentiation circuits uh, in culture, moved to in vivo model animal testing with uh, induced myocardial infarctions in rat models via coronary artery ligation. We can visualize in real time the um, effect of our genes and of um, promoting repair of the cardiac tissue. And then hopefully, because this has real world applications, this can move on to clinical trials where we can actually try to save people's lives. Again, our circuit involves taking a the cell, introducing our um, constructs, both targeting and dif differentiation, differentiating the cell, um, arming it, delivering it to the patient, and hopefully this will attach to the damaged tissue, initiate effectors, and repair the damaged heart. Uh, we'd like to thank the Stone Eagle Group for contributions, uh, the Allen family, and the Porterville Breakfast Rotary Club. Um, without them, the project wouldn't have been possible. And thank you for listening. We will now take questions. Uh, so my question is, um, your genetic circuit, did you design it out of BioBrick parts? And did you submit those parts to the registry? Um, so we did not, we did not, because the BioBrick um, building system is so infeasible, um, and a lot of the sites that we use for BioBricks are already present in our constructs because our constructs are well over 3 KB each. Um, it was actually, um, unless we did, you know, um, point mutations for every construct, um, we would not be able to. Um, so the answer to that is no. Um, however, our effector genes are BioBricks, um, and we did submit some of those. Um, obviously, um, they're also in um, some of the non-standard plasmids, which you guys don't accept. Um, and for our purposes, we wouldn't be able to <laughs> conduct our experiments. So first of all, it's a very nice presentation. What, are they making people smaller these days, or what? <laughs> or maybe, well, never mind. Um, so uh, it's not clear to me for the team members here that are represented, how much of the very nice work you guys did versus how much was kind of, you know, from last year, how much was kind of previously existing in the lab, or uh, if there's other people involved in these studies or not. So can you just comment on that? So um, at the adjournment of last year's 2007, um, Omar Khan, which was on last year's team, um, also continued work on the CRP. He and I um, continue to do the experiments. Um, everything that you see um, on here, the design and everything, is all student-based, um, which uh, I lead. And um, basically under the advisory of Andrew Mendelson, um, there is really all the hands-on and all the, all the problem troubleshooting is all from the students. Um, this year's team designed, um, spent a lot of time designing the differentiation circuit. Unfortunately, um, we didn't get to experimental stages with the differentiation, um, but when we return, um, hopefully we can continue that with some of the students. Um, because our system is mammalian based, um, obviously it, a three month um, course is not going to be sufficient enough, unlike a lot of the bacterial systems involved. It takes, you know, months to just run an experiment, which you see. So I think I missed something about the differentiation timing. Um, you had mentioned at the beginning that if you inject differentiated cardiomyocytes, whatever, um, that they die, and then you put in all these anti-necrosis, anti-cell death pathway stuff. But then at the end, um, it sounded like you were going to differentiate them and then target them, and I just wasn't clear, are the stop gaps that you put in going to stop the cardio, the differentiated cells from dying, or is there, is that still going to remain a problem? Yeah, so one problem would be that um, current therapies, if you introduce the stem cells to the, the heart, the, they'll just die off and not actually target. So those factors are to make sure that um, we target and the cells actually survive for a long time. And, uh... 
Um, there are actually two different circuits. So um, basically, differentiation will occur prior to targeting. Um, and even though these cells upon differentiation should be um, post-mitotic, um, a, a lot of the problem is that um, due to um, damage or whatever, they will actually undergo um, program cell death via one of the pathways, even though they've already differentiated. Um, the pathway, if you if you remember from one of the slides, is actually a part of the effector genes, which actually won't be initiated until targeting has occurred. So if the cells um, are swimming around in your body in a real therapy and actually don't target the tissue, they will then actually die by themselves, which is actually okay, because then they won't be going around doing bad things. Okay, let's, uh, thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation. Let's get the next team down here.